Following an historic summit in Singapore, President Trump and Kim Jong-un signed a broad agreement. It has the U.S. committing to a new diplomatic relationship with Pyongyang in exchange for Kim's reaffirmation of his firm and unwavering commitment to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. And the U.S. and North Korea working to build a lasting and stable peace regime on the peninsula. Former U.N. Ambassador and National Security Council member and American foreign policy strategist Nancy Soderbergh joins me on the morning show for some perspective. Good to have you here. Always Thank a pleasure. you so much. My pleasure. Meeting was no doubt extraordinary. But it's the legacy that's most important. What happens next? Short answer is we don't know. This is a new era of diplomacy with President Trump breaking all the rules. But six months ago, we were tweeting about who had a bigger nuclear button. And so having a summit to talk about how to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula is historic and a breakthrough. So it's a good thing. We don't know what's going to happen. There were no real details in this agreement that they signed. Um, and the negotiators who were working towards something substantive at this summit weren't able to get to yes. Now, having watched these negotiations over many years, the North Koreans in the 90s figured out that their one international currency was their nuclear program, and they've basically extorted the international community for decades for a deal that they then cheat on. Now, whether or not President Trump can get this regime to do something different is the big question, and we, uh, we just don't know. But talking is a good thing. Talking about peace and disarmament is a good thing. What the United States promised to do at this meeting was to suspend our exercises, which are provocative. Exactly. I, I remember being in the White House in the same situation. The Pentagon has these on kind of rote um, pre-scheduled, and they don't bother to tell the White House. So in the middle of sensitive negotiations, they're out practicing war. So. Um, you know, these types of things can be provocative, but you also don't want to give up something that's important to the South Koreans. Apparently, we didn't tell the South Koreans we were doing that, so there need, there's a lot of work yeah, there still is. to come. Uh, the president says he trusts Kim, but Secretary of State Mike Pompeo basically said verification is key here. Yeah, I mean, President Reagan famously said, trust uh, but verify. In this case, I would not trust this regime. This is a ruthless regime that murders its own people. It's got gulags. Uh, this is an individual who's bumped off his uncle and a uh, half-brother and shot with a cannon or something. So, you know, it, this is not someone I would trust. But you don't get to make peace with your enemies. Uh, the, we are still at a state of war. My own father was a Korean War veteran, very proud 82nd Airborne. I mean, Americans have an investment in peace in, in the Korean Peninsula. So putting this on the table with President Trump's effort to do it a different way. It hasn't worked so far, so maybe this one will work. Um, most experts believe it's going to be very long, hard slog to actually get Kim to do what he said he would do, which is fully denuclearized. But it's a good thing to have talking. I think we need to just now sit down and let the diplomats do the hard work. And President Trump will be back at this to try and push for a real deal, I am sure. After what happened with the G7 and the acrimony that exists, especially between Justin Trudeau and the president, Angela Merkel was not happy, neither was Emmanuel Macron. What do you think the world body politics going to take of this meeting? I think it's increasingly going to be a G6. And I think the United States doesn't need to pick a fight with these allies. Uh, we need these allies in promoting peace around the world and tackling the global challenges, which by definition we can't do alone. So uh, I think it's an unnecessary spat, and I think we need to get past it and get down to the hard work of negotiating the global problems uh, together. The U.S. needs to lead in these problems. Uh, we are the only superpower. And to the extent that we leave a void, people that we don't want to fill them will fill them. And that's not good for the American people. So I'd rather see the United States leading in the G7 than picking squabbles. Did Kim get what he wanted in being legitimized as a world leader and, you know, maybe moving toward turning around his economy? Because face it, beyond Pyongyang, there's virtually no power. There's no Internet in the country. Well, the photo op with the president of the United States is something that the North Koreans had, have wanted for four decades, and no president until President Trump was willing to play that card. So, yes, they got a big thing in the legitimization of sitting down with the United States president and having the um, exercises suspended. But if that actually gets them to have a denuclearized peninsula, it'll be worth it. So we don't know, but it's worth a try, in my view. Like we said, the proof is in the legacy. Nancy, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. More diplomacy that has to take place before any of this becomes reality. Count on News for Jax to let you know what happens.